Right, everyone, welcome to this episode of The Elevator, which everybody will know in the series of inspiring interviews. We're picking people who are exceptional, both in terms of elevating themselves in their businesses and in their careers, but more importantly, elevating others in the community. I'm very, very uh, pleased and proud to say we have Amar Mirza with us. And I'm going to just give you a bit of the highlights. I've got his uh, very extensive C, uh, uh, CV here. He is not only a CBE, uh, but also he's spent, I think, uh, uh, his entire professional life helping other businesses. You can see over his shoulder, it says SME Center for Excellence, uh, but also uh, chairman of the IOD in the Northeast, chair of business growth boards and uh, SME representatives at the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership, and many more positions, which he will tell us about uh, uh, through that. Now, uh, Amar, I wanted to ask you, why have you, you know, a lot of business people, they just stick to their own business. Why have you decided to spend so much of your time, energy, and effort helping other business people? Uh, it's a great question, and thank you for having me here, Alvish. It's a, it's a pleasure. So uh, it probably comes down to, quite simply, the support wasn't there for me um, early on. So as I started my education, my career, we had lots of influences. So my late mother and father, you know, great uh, inspirational people. But um, having that support locally and regionally, uh, it wasn't there. So, so that's probably the key driver as to, to why I've done what I do and why I give away a lot of my time. And, and tell me, you know, if somebody's watching this and they're thinking about, you know, they need support, we're going through difficult times, or they think about entering entrepreneurship, which are the key uh, organizations uh, you'd recommend? And of course, do give your own ones a plug <laughs> as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, look, uh, it, there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to business support. And certainly over the last 20 years or so, I, I found that. So there's some great government uh, organizations that, and government initiatives, uh, and indeed the Northeast LEP, which is the local enterprise partnership, is the strategic body here in the northeast of England uh, that is responsible for developing and helping pull together a, a strategic economic plan. So it's the, the body in between government and, and, and the locality. Uh, so, so an overarching strategic plan uh, is in place for, for the LEP and that fundamentally comes around to helping create more and better jobs. Other organizations like the Institute of Directors, where this was the first organization that I wanted to join when I set up my own business. Yeah, it's, a, it's a fantastic organization, huge pedigree, uh, huge history and heritage. And it, uh, it, it is in place to help directors and uh, help create a, a better place for both directors and recognizing that directors lead organizations and, and, and improving governance as well. So we've got the IOD and then the, the SME Center of Excellence, which was established a number of years ago. And the underlying aim of that, Alpesh, is, is quite simply to provide the right support at the right time and, and if there's a price associated with at the right price. And, and that's the key and core uh, proposition, the purpose of the organization. And, and that's why I've personally you know, reach out, connect, collaborate. Because for me, the most important thing for any business support organization is collaboration. And, uh, and, and we facilitated quite a lot of that through our approach and the activities that we do. And I guess what you're saying, what the, all those... Uh, organizations have in common and what your approach has in common is that knowledge share and the network so we don't not only do we not feel we're alone as yeah. entrepreneurs and business people doing this but also we have the leverage that we get from those is that is that I mean is that it in a nutshell of what it's you're a, finding yeah uh, absolutely and it's a great way of putting it it is that you know it, why do you go and join 
uh, at a particular organization, regardless of whatever it is, uh, whether it's a membership or a voluntary organization, it's, it's to connect with other people and learn uh, and, and share those experiences. And that's exactly the case for the organizations that I'm involved in. And, and, and admittedly, there's a whole host of others. You know, that I know that you're uh, a great ambassador for the Department for International Trade. It's a great organization. And, uh, and alongside the various trade bodies, you've got the chambers, the, the CBI, the FSB, uh, all of these organizations. Now, what I'm saying is, is uh, what, what any individual should be exploring is, well, what's right for them? So being clear on why are you joining any network or community? What is it that you're trying to get from that? And, and if you're able to think on paper, write that down and, and, and then explore like you would uh, in developing any relationship, you know, explore what are you gonna give, what are you gonna get, and what does success look like for that relationship, I think is a great approach. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and I like the comment that you just mentioned there, which is what does success look like? Before we started the interview, you, you asked that question as well, and it really concentrates the mind. What does success look like? What, uh, you know, having that goal. You mentioned also giving. Uh, a lot of these organizations, people think, okay, I'll, I'll join, I'll network, uh, or sometimes they don't even think about joining. And hopefully you'll be now through this interview encouraging them to join in those resources. What about being part of those organizations? Why is it important? And I want to touch upon the fact that a lot of people from our community, the ethnic minority community, uh, are entrepreneurs either through you know, forced entrepreneurship for a whole host of reasons or because it's culturally uh, uh, what we're about. What message would you give to them to get involved into these organizations as well? A great question, Alpesh. And, and you know, if you want to influence, if you want to make sure that any organization is fit for purpose for all communities, and in particular, you know, the, the, the BIM or uh, the Asian communities who um, you and I are both huge advocates for and of. It's, it's about getting involved. It's about connecting, contributing. It's about different perspectives. It, it's, it's about sharing those experiences. You know, I, I mean, statistically, Asian people are, 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 are nigh on three times more likely to be entrepreneur and more enterprising than our white counterparts. Yeah, that doesn't mean that any of us are any less or more business oriented. It just means that we have um, that in our culture, uh, particularly. And, and that those drivers, if we can share those drivers and those, uh, those reasons for being entrepreneurial, and then also shape the offer. So the reason why I became a chair or wanted to become chair of the, the local IOD in the Northeast North was I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business person, you know, first and foremost, that's what I am. I enjoy being a director. I love enterprise. And uh, I wanted to make sure that the IOD's offer, which was, you know, just to remind everyone, the first organization trade body that I wanted to join is as relevant and responsive to my needs and those needs of all entrepreneurs and directors in particular. So, you know, I, I think it's absolutely critical that anyone who wants to make an impact and make sure that the support on offer is relevant to them needs to contribute. Yeah, I think that's an important part of the equation, that contribution uh, part of it. Now, there's two other things which in the broader economy we know is of concern, particularly in the United Kingdom, the North-South divide and the lack of exporting relative to peer countries like Germany that we have in the UK. Um, how would you say, given your hat at the IOD, given the work you're doing with um, SMEs, how are you helping change that? In those imbalances, those things which aren't, uh, uh, we're not as strong at as we should be, exporting in that north-south divide? 
Yeah, so north-south divide, first and foremost, we need to recognise that London is the capital, and, and we need to appreciate that. Having said that, um, statistically, the amount of money being spent uh, in the north of the country has always been significantly less than the south. And as a consequence, that then drives more organizations, more individuals. So the, the balancing of, or if we use a, a, a topical term, leveling up, what we need to do is make sure that there are equal opportunities. So it's not just equality, it's equal opportunities for individuals and businesses, regardless of where they are geographically. And we need to do that by joining things up. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a case of bringing regions and communities together in the north to work more uh, cohesively, more collaboratively. And we've seen a bit of that through the northern powerhouse. Uh, uh, however, it needs to be, what we need to do is recognize the locality. So you know, it, it's great to hear that you're from the north and a great advocate. Uh, but we have regional, we have cultural differences from Newcastle and Leeds. So a business's need and an individual's need will be slightly different to in Leeds as it will be in Newcastle. So we need to consider those factors. So North-South divide, you know, it is about making sure that we have equal opportunities, that it is longer term. So it's not just a let's do something here and now. There's a lot of short termism in, in, in planning and approaches. So we need to take a longer term approach to that. And it's about making sure that all communities and all parts of the community are involved in that and they feel as if they're part of that. So that's the north-south side of things, Alpesh. Um, the, the, the exporting, it's a, it's a great point. So uh, the three biggest growth enablers for any organization are digital, so digital transformation. And, and we've seen in the last six months almost an acceleration of 10 years of digital adoption taking place through the pandemic and the circumstance. The second one is around innovation. So it's about doing things differently, it's about, you know, it's not invention, it's innovation, it's about continuous improvement. And the third one, and for me, is an absolute critical one, is new markets or internationalization. And any business that operates internationally, or without a doubt, um, they're going to be more sustainable and they're going to be more successful. So, you know, we should be doing everything we can to be encouraging more businesses to explore exporting and providing that infrastructure to help support them more meaningfully and, and, and almost creating localized clusters around that as well, Alpesh, I think is a, is a really good approach. And I think the organizations you're involved with, because of that knowledge share and those networks, there'll be people who'll be able to show others how to do it, people who are further down the line now look anybody looking at us and listening to us would obviously instantly be able to tell you're a geordie and i'm a yorkshireman uh, when it comes to the talent pool in our two regions i've often said what well, you know the londoners where the money does the venture capital money the angel investors you know the money does tend to congregate there but when it comes to spending that capital they're often missing a trick in not realizing the talent they can hire we live in an age of remote hires in other parts of the uk like Tyneside, like Newcastle, like Leeds. What would you say about the local talent, which is so overlooked in the region you cover for, you know, in your work with entrepreneurs? What's the, what's the, you know, be an ambassador for your local talent that you've seen that you realize, you know, people are missing a trick in other parts of the UK, not hiring uh, up north, as it were. I mean, you've made the point there quite clearly, Alpesh, you know, that people are missing a trick. So, Certainly in the Northeast, we have such great people. We have highly educated, highly motivated people. And the cost and the quality of living here is amazing. You, within a space of five minutes, 
you can go from a city centre you know, to a green space place through and, and extend that. Within 30 minutes, you can be on the coast. Within 30 minutes, you can see some of the castles. With the, our spaces are world class. We've got some of the most amazing world heritage sites and the people to complement that. We've got world class universities here. We've got some of the foremost national innovation centers here. So you're absolutely right. It is the talent is being overlooked. And going back to that north south divide, Alpesh, one of the drivers. So when I finished my formal education, the first thing I done was go off to London because it was the big smoke. It was attractive. That's where I wanted to be. That's where I thought I wanted to be. And that's where I thought I needed to be. I was there for a year. I got homesick and uh, immediately came back you know, to the greatest region as far as I'm concerned in the world. And we've got great, passionate, positive people here. And really, we need to get more organizations to appreciate that. And, and, and the support that's here is fantastic for any organization who's looking at talent, talent pool, our academic, both from a, a, a practical, but a theoretical approach as well, is all very well established and ready to support any organization. Ama, you, you know, you're a fantastic ambassador, and I think you, you, I think slowly it's changing thanks to people like you that that businesses are realizing more and more and following. I, know, I mean, I know BT, for instance, are huge in Newcastle. Um, I think more and more of this, the SMEs from around the country are realizing uh, uh, the talent pool, like you said, and the quality of life. You know, we're both from the north. The quality of life um, that you have, and it's that whole holistic approach. It's not just about making the money in business. Uh, uh, but like you said, uh, you, you've got that ability, the ease of doing business, but also the easier life on top of it. So you've got the ability to be global um, and uh, you've got the ability to uh, have a better life, I think a better quality of life. And I can say that as a Yorkshireman in London uh, with direct <laughs> evidence of it. I'm, I have to thank you. We've got to, we've got to leave it there, unfortunately. Any last minute messages you want to give the audience that you've not had a chance to cover before we have to uh, call it a day? Well, I, look, Alpesh, I could be sat here and, and I'll have 101 messages. But for me, uh, if you're interested in exploring enterprise, uh, go and do it uh, is the key message. Uh, particularly in the current climate, there's some fantastic opportunities to become your own boss. And if you're going to do it, do it here in the Northeast. Brilliant. Amar Mirza, CBE, thank you so much for being part of the Elevator series of interviews. Thank you. Thank you.